What's going on everybody, it's Gummer Boxing Reviews here, and welcome back to another LEGO DC Super Villains video! So in today's video, I'm of course going to be showing you guys how to make the Lizard from Marvel Comics using the in-game customizer. So without further ado, let's get to it! Alright, so to start off with, we're of course going to head into Custom Character, Appearance, Head, Head, and then Head again, and you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom until you find Custom Head 41, which is of course this skull. Now then, before we use this skull, we need to change it a little bit, and the way you do that is basically choose any other head so I'll go with custom head 38 here which is this old man face then go into wrinkle decal color and you want to make the wrinkles the exact same color as the color that you're going to be using for the skin so for instance I'll go with this green then you want to back out of there go back into head pieces select custom head 41 again and make it green you can see there you can barely see the skull on the face it's an almost a blank face which is brilliant for a character like lizard because then of course it makes it look like the actual character it doesn't look like some one dressed up as the lizard which we definitely do not want now then once you've done that you can of course back out of there go into neck pieces and of course we want the crocodile mouthpiece that is just perfect all right now then on to the helmets so for the helmet piece you're of course going to scroll down until you find the crocodile helmet piece so it puts it all together and you can see there we just want to make sure it is the same green as the mouth because when you select it for the first time it will be a lighter green so just make sure it's this one just before the dark green now then, we of course do need an attachment, which is going to be a tail. And the great thing about the tail is you can change the color of two parts of the piece. So you can go ahead and make the first color this green right here, and then make the second color dark green. So you can just see there's a nice balance of the colors there, which looks very, very cool. For the body, I went with a preset body, and if we scroll up to the top, we should be able to find it. Was that it there? Yes, that's it. Hugo Strange. I think Hugo Strange is perfect because it's got that lab coat kind of look, so I would definitely go with that one. And it should be white, but, you know, just make sure it is, obviously. For the arms, we're going to go ahead and go into both arms, and we want to choose sleeves because we want the first color to be white, I believe. Yep, white, and then the second color to be green. And, of course, we also want to do the same with the hands, so we'll go into hands and make them green. Nice! Looking very, very cool indeed. Now then, onto hips. So for the hips, you know, it depends on what version of the lizard that you're actually looking at, because his pants can sometimes look like this color, but I'm going to go with this purple right here, because I think that looks really, really cool. So we'll go with purple hips, and of course for the legs, we want to make sure we choose boots. And then for the first color, we're going to go with purple, so it matches the hips. And of course, for the second color, we want green for his feet. Nice! That looks awesome. Very, very cool indeed. Now then, on to effects. So we don't need a left-hand glow, and we also don't need a right-hand glow. But for the hit impact effects, unfortunately, they're not actually showing up in my customizer at the moment. Because so, as you can see here, there's nothing coming from the punch. However, despite this, I believe that when we actually put the lizard into gameplay, the effects should still show up. So what we're going to do is we'll stick with style one and we're going to go with this color right here because when i made the lizard the first time that effect coming from the lizard looked really cool so we'll stick with that one then for the jump slam effect we'll just go with this one right here and we'll make it black so it just leaves a crack in the ground we'll just wait for that to disappear there we are nice awesome that looks very very cool indeed now of course we can move on into the abilities so I don't think we need anything on the tag button, but for the jump button, if we go to double tap X, we'll give the lizard the double jump ability, and I think we'll stick with style 1. Yep, that looks awesome. And then for hold X, you definitely want him to be able to hyper jump, because being able to hyper jump around Metropolis as the lizard is a lot of fun. So I definitely recommend you add that to your custom character. We're going to leave square, but on hold square, what we'll do is we'll add the lunge attack ability, and we'll go with, you guessed it, style 3, which yes, I do use a lot, but let's be honest, the other options don't really fit the lizard. You can see here, that is far too basic for the lizard. And this one is for speedsters. And last time I checked, the lizard was not a speedster. So I think Lunch Style 3 works perfectly for this character. So for the circle button abilities, I think we'll start with tap circle and give the lizard the detective mode ability because I think that makes a lot of sense and we'll make it this color right here. Nice. Now then, for hold circle, I'm going to give him the destroy mode ability because I've never actually made a character with this ability yet and the lizard fits it perfectly. So let's see here, what have we got? So we've got style 1, uh, that's a bit too much like Bane. We've got style 2, that's pretty good, and then we've got style 3. That's a bit too silly for Lizard, so I think I'm going to go with Style 2, because it'll be really cool to see him charging into enemies to take them out like that. So I think that is really, really cool. Alright, now then, on to the skills. 
so let's see here. So we don't want a grapple hook, but we definitely want the technology skill because obviously Dr. Connors is a very intelligent man. We also want the acrobat ability, the ability to climb walls. We want super strength and the ability to smash walls. Nice. Anything else in here that we need? I think we'll go with tracking. That works. And we'll go with this green right here. That looks cool. And then finally, I think we'll add hazard protection because I think that makes sense. Nice. All right, cool. Now, of course, we can move on into personality. So for the health icon, we definitely want it to be green. For the health type, I think I'm going to keep it as a standard health type. For the voice, you know, I don't think there's any monster voices in the character customizer. So what I would do is just choose any old male voice. So I'm going to go with voice one. For the speed, keep it as normal because obviously the lizard is not a speedster. For the target reticle, I think poison ivies fits quite nicely. So we'll stick with that one. And then for the animation set, this is actually optional, you see, because you could either make the character with the strong animation set, which definitely looks really cool, or you could give him claws, which is what I'm going to do, because I think the lizard looks really cool being able to attack enemies with his claws. So if we go with the animal type and make it the same color as the skin, you can see here, I think that looks pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm happy with it. All right, cool. So we've done the appearance, the abilities, the personality, and the weapons. Now, of course, we just need to fill in his basic information. So let's see here. For the status, I'm going to put neutral because he's not really all that bad, is he? He didn't intend for this to happen. So I think neutral makes a lot of sense for Dr. Connors. For the affiliation, we'll go with unknown. And then for the character name, we'll just call him the lizard. Nice. There we are. All right, cool. So now, of course, what we're going to do is drop the lizard into the hub world and see just what he can do. And here he is. This is, of course, my custom-made lizard from Marvel Comics made in LEGO DC Supervillains. Let's just get a good look at him right here. Honestly, I think he turned out awesome. I mean, basically, one day I was just messing around with the customizer. I noticed the crocodile head and mouthpiece and, of course, the tail as well. And I thought, I wonder if I could make the lizard. And sure enough, I did. And I think he looks extremely cool. So what can he do? Well, of course, he can attack enemies with his claws like this. He can do a ground pound attack like that, which is awesome. And it leaves a crack in the ground, which is very cool. He's got detective mode. He can charge towards objects, which we'll do right here. There we are. So he's got the lunge attack. And he also has this other charge attack, which is very cool. So if we hold down circle, you can see this, which is very nice. And of course, we can't forget he can do a double jump and a hyper jump, which is awesome. So let's actually go into Metropolis here, fight the police and see what we can do. All right, here they come. Here they are over here. So first off, I want to see this. Now that looks awesome. That looks very cool with the uh, green effects there coming off the character. Because usually I don't like to add that to my characters. You'll notice from uh, my custom videos. I don't know why. I guess I just think if it's not a character like Doctor Strange or Scarlet Witch or something. You know, someone who's magic. I don't really like adding an effect. But with the lizard, there's just something about it. I think it looks really cool. And yes, I have teamed the lizard up with Killer Croc because why not? I can do that, so I did. <laughs> it's a cool team up. Lizard and Cro Killer Croc. Very, very cool indeed. Right, where are the actual police? There's not many going on at the minute. Come on. I guess we have to fight some civilians to get the police on us because that is how the notoriety works. Right, hang on. No, sir, don't run away. I'm not going to hurt you. I mean, I am, but you can't die. You're invincible, so it's okay. <laughs> But I need to attack you so we can get the police on us. There we go. Alright, here we go. No, I'm not going to hit you yet. Well, I did, but I'm going to keep hitting this guy first. There we go. Is that the highest notoriety? No, it's not. See, this is the thing. You've got to keep it going. We have to keep it going. Alright, okay, so let me see all these moves. So we got this one. We tried that. That froze them. And then the X button. Slam them on the ground. That is awesome. Very cool indeed. Okay, yep, this works definitely. Ooh, did he did he just do like a growl or was that Killer Croc? I'm pretty sure it was Killer Croc, but it felt like it was Lizard and that was really cool. That just makes me wish that there was monster voices in the customizer. Maybe next time. See, I don't usually put a lot of detail into the voices because they're just grunts and everything. I'll only usually choose like a male or female voice. But if they did stuff like that where there's monster voices and things, then I probably would go into more detail with it. Although I will say, you know, it's great that they have robot voices and things like that. That's cool, definitely. But monster voices in the next game, whatever it may be, that would be great. 
So, we've actually seen two interpretations of the lizard. Well, not the lizard, but Dr. Connors uh, in movies so far. You know, we've of course had in the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy, we had Dylan Baker as Dr. Connors, who I think did a fantastic job. And I still hate to this day that he never got to actually become the lizard. Because I, what I think is bad about that is basically, don't get me wrong, I love the amazing Spider-Man. I think Reese Iphons did a great job. I'm not crazy about the design, you know, I've grown to accept it, but but I really wanted the dinosaur looking lizard like we see here, like you saw in the 90s animated series. That is the lizard I want to see on the big screen if Sony or Marvel or whoever, you know, attempt to do the lizard again in a movie. But what was, I think, the worst thing about uh, having The Amazing Spider-Man happen for me was because with Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3, you can see, if you watch them now, if you go back and watch them, you'll see that basically what they were trying to do is introduce Dr. Connors and slowly build, like, a friendship with Peter and Connors. And what that was essentially going to lead up to is that friendship to to just be tearn, torn apart by the lizard transformation. And that just would have been so cool. It really would have. I think that would have been rewarding to watch for the viewer because they'd grew up with these two movies, Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3, of seeing Dr. Connors. And then it gets to the point where, you know, Peter's very true friend is his enemy. And I think that would have been really interesting. Kind of similar to what they did with Harry, but I think it would have been more compelling with Dr. Connors. I really do. I really feel like Lizard should have happened. Um, and I hate that it never did. I mean, there was a load of rumors for Spider-Man 4. You know, there's everything from the Lizard to Vulture to Vultures to Black Cat to... Uh, who else? Oh, yeah, Carnage was thrown around. I mean, I don't think Carnage is true. I think that's more of a fan idea, but it was thrown around at least. You know, so who knows? I think the main plot for Spider-Man 4 was going to be about Black Cat and the Vulture, which would have been cool, definitely. That definitely would have been cool, but I mean, Dylan Baker as the Lizard, that is something I'll always want to see. Maybe what Sony and Marvel could do is perhaps team up and do a Spider-Man 4 comic. I don't think it was released, but I think there was this comic made, which was a sequel to the Tim Burton Batman movies, and it introduced Two-Face. And uh, also brought back Catwoman and stuff like that. And I don't think it was ever released, but it was a really cool idea. So it was essentially what the third movie probably would have been... But it was a comic, and I think it would be great if Sony or Marvel or whoever, you know, b was able to do that with uh, Spider-Man 4. You could make it into a comic, you could make it into an animated movie. I would watch a Spider-Man 4 animated movie with Tobey Maguire and Dylan Baker any day. I mean, that would be incredible. I think there's a lot of um, potential for stuff like that. I think just because these movies are finished doesn't mean we should completely forget about using them in some way. I think the the general public, you know, if they saw a new Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie, whether it be animated or or it's a comic book or whatever, I still think that there would be a lot of love for that and I think it would do really well. I mean, if, say for example, Entertainment Weekly announced tomorrow, oh, Tobey Maguire is coming back as Spider-Man in, you know, a movie or something, the internet would absolutely explode. That would be huge news. Don't get me wrong, I love Tom Holland. You know, I think he's an incredible Spider-Man. He's my favorite take on Spider-Man. But if Tobey Maguire suddenly announced he was coming back for the role to do, I don't know, a Craven's Last Hunt movie or something like that, it would... It would go, it would be massive. It would be absolutely massive news. And that movie would make bank at the box office. Absolutely. So I think there's still a lot you could do with the Sam Raimi franchise if they were to ever say, hey, you know what? Let's do something else with this. Let's not just leave it like that. Although in saying that, I suppose it did end in a good way. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for lots more videos real soon. And as always, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe.